Next, pain, changing and flying from place to place in the shoulders, back, arms and knees. Okay, so there is wandering pain. What are the other remedies for wandering pains? What remedy is Okay, Phytoleca. Simisifuga. Kali Sir. Kali Baito. Pulsatila. I don't know to put it. Or? Calmia. Calmia. Okay. Barberis Vulgaris. So many remedies. One remedy we need. Lactan. Okay, so let us differentiate one remedy at a time. First remedy, phytoleca. What is phytoleca? Electric shock like pains. They are not wandering pains. What are they? Flying or there is extending pains. You know, pains of breast extends to the entire body. So they are extending pains. Hmm? Barberis. Barberis is also extending pains. From one spot, the whole region starts to pain. Radiating pain. Huh. But yes, Barberis along with this extending pain also has wandering pains, erratic pains. Hmm? So generally Barberis patient, what you find? He, doctor, when I have pain, no? it starts from here and then it comes here, here, then it extends to the whole right side, all this pain is severe pain. And then the, when the pain becomes very intense, then it becomes, it goes all over the body and I don't understand where my pain is. It starts paining here also, it starts paining here also, then I feel it is paining here, then I feel it is paining here, then I feel my head is paining, then I feel my arm is paining. So the whole pain then starts to shift and wander and patient feels confused, where is my pain? Where is the pain exactly? Okay, that is Barberis. Next remedy. Simisifuga. Simisifuga. Simisifuga, what is the character? Simisifuga sideways. Hip to hip. One is pain goes from side to side. Hip to hip, arm to arm. That is one. Another, what is Simisifuga? Erratic pains. pains. Huh? Uh, one is uh, one is semisifuga pain is generally seen in the female generative organs. Uh, Barberis pains is generally seen in in tubular organs, not only renal. Tubular, matlab intestine. Uh, what you say? Ureter. Tubular organs. If you see tubular organ pains, shifting, wandering pains. Strongly think of barberis. If you see generative, female generative organ pains, shifting pains, then think of simi yuga. But in simi yuga, what is important is along with the pain, you will see a lot of dullness and heaviness. Very heavy and dull. I am feeling very, very dull and heavy and suffocated because of this pain. I am not able to do anything. Very dull, heavy and suffocated and extremely sensitive to everything. Touch, noise, temperature, pressure, nothing they need. Especially sensitive to insults. <coughs> insults and feeling of this, what is it? Suffocated and tight down, wired. Okay. Why heavy? What is the symptom of Simis Yuga which tells us heavy, confused? I what tells her? Ah, like a cloud over her head. Okay, so that cloud is like a very dark, <coughs> dull place for them. Heavy, dark, dull place. That is Simis Yuga. Okay. Next remedy. Pulsatilla. Pulsatilla is wandering pains and then you know the general, mild, gentle, meeting, all that. I will not discuss that. 
Next. Calmia. Huh? Calmia, what is the character? Huh? Rheumatic. Okay. Heart affection, very good. Ascending pains. Descending pains. Descending pains. In Calmia, it is descending pains. Pain radiate downwards. So alternate with heart complaints, with very low heart rate, low heart rate, is it 45, 50, 35 to 40. <coughs> Any other remedy remaining? Kali self. Kali self is like pulsating, mild, gentle, healing, yellow. Discharges, planned discharges. Any other remedy? Lacan. Lacan, I think we did. Erratic pains. We did the whole remedy. Okay, next. Keynotes. Twitching aggravates arms, alternating with obstacles. Okay? Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes. Titanic. Convulsions and subsultures in all limbs. Pelvis erect. Abdominal muscles contracted and rigid. Yeah? You understood this symptom? Okay. Next. Subsultures. Back. Convulsions and subsurgence. I don't know. Maybe some kind of convulsion or contact. Next. Constriction sensations. You get this? Constricting sensation. Violence. Yeah? Yes or no? Okay. Next. Emaciation aggravated on face. Okay. Now this is new symptom. The emaciation is especially seen on the face. Emaciation is so marked that it may be said that sometimes that the flesh falls off from him. Okay, like the gangrene, the emaciation is such that the patient completely emaciates, like the flesh has only fallen off. Okay. Now, I think we did do some cases. Let's do some cases. First case that I ever heard of Tarantula was a case of Dr. Shankar. Okay. This case is a case of cough. Sir was treating this child. Huh? He gave him four or five remedies. Nothing was happening. Huh? So, he said <coughs> the mother and the child took off. I want to review your case completely. Cough is going on since last one, two months. So, sir is trying to take the case. He's, he's taking the history, trying to ask the mother, the child, the symptoms, tell me symptoms. Suddenly, this child starts to, starts to say, Hey Shankaran, why are you not reducing my cough? Then he, he continues talking with the mother. So mother tells this symptom, that symptom. Again he says, Hey mother, shut up. I can't hear your own voice. You are talking so loud. Just shut up. Okay. So then son asks, what is this about noise? So, he, so she says, yeah, I can't tolerate noise. You know, loud noise, any kind of noise, it just seems to grimace with that noise. No, I don't want that noise. Okay. And then, secondly, what he observed is the child started to cough. Okay. As the child started to cough, he, he would jerk. And the jerk was such that the face would come down and the limbs would come towards his face. You understood? No? Hands and limbs were jerk and were push towards the face and his head would stir. So, 
Firstly, sir saw the cough. He saw cough with jerking of limbs towards the, jerking of limbs where the hands bent, uh, legs bent towards the face and something like that. Okay, <coughs> legs jerk towards the face and arms jerk towards the face. Something like that. Come together. Yeah, legs and arms come together. So he thought there was only one remedy. The remedy was pterygium. Okay. Then you can see extreme sensitivity to noise. Pteridion is known for extreme sensitivity to noise and cough. So was always there. So, so the what you see here is one is hypersensitive, no? Very sensitive, especially to noise. That is the first case. Secondly, second case was of Dr. Jayesha. Okay. This patient was patient having very high grade fever. Huh? It's been 10 days. The fever just does not seem to reduce. Fever is not reducing. So, sir asked the mother, what is he doing? What does he do? No, now he does not go to school. He stays at home. So what does he do? Staying at home. The only thing he is doing nowadays is he keeps drawing and he keeps keeps making some kind of colorful things. He uses a lot of color and he keeps drawing. Okay. So, you know what is the symptom? One is constantly busy. Yeah. And? Artistic, okay. The symptom is better by using bright colors. Okay. So, patient really likes to use very bright, colorful things. Okay. So, Tarantula has this symptom that they are very, very attractive towards bright colors. Okay. So, he gave this patient Tarantula. Yes, all kinds of bright colors, red, yellow, blue, bright, attractive colors. That is what Tarantula basically <coughs> likes. And what is important is this constant. You know, I told you, you know, tubercular miasm, what you will see? Constant and hectic means 10 days it's passed. Fever just does not reduce. 102 is 102. In spite of giving crocy, in spite of giving antipyretic, the fever just remains <coughs> very, very peculiar of tubercular myosome. Very constant, hectic. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Next. So, as we stay with fevers, what happens now? One of the first cases that I saw was of a child. Okay, this child was brought to be me by the grandmother. Her grandmother came, she brought him, she said, Sir, he bilkul khata nahi. He just does not eat. The only thing he wants to do is to play. The whole day he is outside and he keeps playing and he keeps playing. This grandmother came into the clinic. I didn't even see this child. He was just roaming around all around the clinic and he already had left and he was playing in the waiting room. I must have seen him only for one minute in 15-20 minutes that the grandmother was there. So, I listened to all this and then I said, please call in the child. So, he came, he said, cat, what is it? So, I said, uh, leave, uh, why you don't eat food? Hey, what do you want to do? He will Okay, so he said, what, what, what business do you have to ask me? 
and hit you. Better mind your own business. And he left. Okay. So I said, what does this child mean? He said, no, he does not eat anything. Inside, doctor, I have seen, sometimes I go searching for him. That whole, whole day he's playing, playing. So I, one, one day I saw he's, he's there sitting, nobody is there. So he's uh, eating sand, you know, mud. He's eating mud and he's eating all those kinds of, what you say, chalk and indigestible things he keeps eating. Okay. Then, then I saw the rubric, food cravings for indigestible things. Okay, then you have only two remedies. Silicia and tarantula. Silicia is in one, one mark, tarantula is in three marks. When you see tarantula, you understand the rest of the aspect. That is what? Uh -huh. Restless. Constant activity, okay? Rest is constant activity, busy. Now, I gave him tarantula. Huh? Grandmother went home and she said, Doctor, first thing he said after we reached home is, I want to eat something. <clears throat> Grandmother was surprised. How come? Okay, so this is generally the pace of tarantula's action. Okay, the symptoms generally set in very slow. You know, time we saw in the proving also six days later on, slowly symptoms set in. Two three hours after, slowly symptoms set in. Very slowly they develop. But once we give the remedy, the response is very very fast. 